Dear learner, welcome to the NIOS Senior Secondary Biology course. I am Dr. Mayank Sagar and today we are going to discuss about reproduction and population control. First of all, what is reproduction and why it is important? It is a biological process in which an organism gives rise to a young one which is similar to itself or it is a process by which living organism produces its own kind. It is a very important characteristic of living organism and what is the advantage of reproduction? It enables the continuity of species generation after generation. Basically, organism reproduce by two modes, asexual and sexual reproduction. Now, what is the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction? First of all, in asexual reproduction, a single parent is involved. But as we compare to sexual reproduction, there are two parents involved that is a male and a female. In asexual reproduction, there is no formation of gametes that is there is no gametogenesis. But in sexual reproduction, there is formation of gametes that is gametogenesis is present. In asexual reproduction, there is no fusion of gametes. But in sexual reproduction, there is fusion of gametes that is fertilization is present which leads to the formation of zygote. In asexual reproduction, individual produce are exact copy of their parents that is they are morphologically and genetically similar and are called as clone. But in sexual reproduction, individuals produce exhibit variation and are called as offspring and this is the most important characteristic in sexual reproduction that it brings variation. In asexual reproduction, it involves mitotic divisions mainly. In sexual reproduction, it involves mitotic as well as meiotic division. And examples of asexual reproduction are amoeba and paramecium. In sexual reproduction, humans, etc. Now, what are the types of asexual reproduction? First of all, binary fission. What do you mean by fission? Fission means breakage. In binary fission, it is a type of asexual reproduction in which parent organism divides into two daughter cell. And the example of binary fission are amoeba and paramecium. In multiple fission, it is a type of asexual reproduction in which division of the nucleus takes place simultaneously or successively into a number of daughter nuclei, followed by division of cell body into an equal number of parts, each containing nucleus. And example of this is plasmodium or it can be simplified in terms like in multiple fusion a single organism divides into many organisms. Next is budding. Budding it is a type of asexual reproduction in which an organism divides into two unequal part that is a larger and a smaller part. The smaller part bud eventually gets separated and converts into a new organism and the example of budding is hydra. As you can see in this picture, zoo spore, in the first picture zoo spores are seen and this is parent cell which is called as zoo sporangium and second picture there is conidia which are seen in pencilium and the third picture depicts budding in hydra. As you can see in first picture there is a larger part and a smaller part. Eventually the smaller part detaches and develops into a new organism. Organisms also reproduce by special asexual reproductive structures like zoospores. In this picture you can see there is zoosporangium which is the parent cell and zoospores. Zoospores are seen in clamidomonas. In this picture you can see conidiospores. Conidiospores are seen in pencilium. Other asexual special reproductive structures are gamules in sponges. And other types of asexual reproduction are regeneration, fragmentation and vegetative propagation in plant. In vegetative propagation of plant, there are special vegetative propagules which are seen in plant in from which the new plant develops like rhizome of ginger, bulbil of agave and leaf notches of bryophyllum. And it is an important note that different organisms adopt mode of asexual reproduction by spores in unfavorable conditions. As you can see, this is the picture of a gamules in sponges. There is a micropyle which is the opening, there is an inner membrane, there are archaeocytes which are ball of cells 
and outside there are spicules which prevents the spores gamules in sponges it is a reproductive body for asexual reproduction in sponges a full grown gamule looks like a tiny hard ball containing an inner mass of undifferentiated cells called as archaeocytes the archaeocytes are surrounded by a resistant covering made up of chitin which provides it its hardness which protects the inner cell gamules tide over unfavorable conditions and when the favorable condition return archaeocyte come out of the micropyle and develop into a sponge now reproduction in humans maturity of human sex organ begins with puberty these changes occur between the age of 10 to 14 years changes occur by the action of hormones primary and secondary organs grow and become mature secondary sex characters also start appearing in male sexual maturity is attained at the age of 13 to 14 years but in females it is early it is attained at 11 to 13 years puberty leads to a stage when child becomes an adolescent now secondary sexual characters in males and females in males there is deepening of voice widening of shoulders and muscular body appearance of beard and mustache growth of axillary and pubic hair whereas in female there is growth of axillary and pubic hair widening of hip and pelvis enlargement of breast and initiation of menstrual cycle this picture shows secondary sexual characters in male and female as you can see on the left side there is growth spurt which is seen in both male and female increase in lean muscle mass changes in body composition increase in penile length and first ejaculation pubic hair starts coming and there is testicular enlargement as compared to female there is breast development changes in body composition pubic hair starts coming menarche which is the first menstrual cycle starts and increase in fat mass now male reproductive system what is the location of male reproductive system it is pelvic region that is lower abdominal region and primary male sex organ it consists of pair of testes which produces sperm male sex accessory duct a pair of vas deferens vasa afferentia and epididymis male sex accessory gland a pair of seminal vesicle a pair of bulbo urethral gland and a prostate gland and external genitalia which is penis now first of all about testes testes are two in number and their location is they are present in a pouch or bag like structure which are which is called as scrotum and this scrotum is extra abdominal scrotum is very important in spermatogenesis as it helps in maintenance of temperature 2 to 3 degree lower than the body temperature and which is necessary for spermatogenesis and we can say that scrotum help acts as thermo regulator now what is the size of testes the length of the testes is 4 to 5 cm and width 2 to 3 cm weight each testes weight weighs about 12 grams covering tunica albuginea which is a capsule of white fibrous connective tissue is the covering of testes now we will talk about internal structure of testes each testes has a two has about 250 compartment which are called as testicular lobules and each lobule contains one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubules which are the site of sperm production in testes each seminiferous tubule is lined by two types of cell they are male germ cells which are also called as spermatogonia and sertoli cell now what are the function of male germ cell and sertoli cell male germ cells undergo meiotic division leading to sperm formation these are the cell which help in which makes sperm sertoli cell these provide nutrition to the developing male germ cell the region outside the seminiferous tubule is called as interstitial space which contains interstitial cell or leydig cells 
Now, what is the function of these leydig cells? These synthesize and secrete testicular hormone called as androgens, that is testosterone, which helps in maintenance of primary and secondary sexual characters in male. Now, we talk about male sex accessory duct. These include reed testes, vasa afferentia, epididymis, and vas deferens. The seminiferous tubules open into vasa afferentia through reed testes. They open into epididymis, which is located along the posterior surface of testes, and it leads to vas deferens that ascends into the abdomen and loops over urinary bladder. Urinary bladder opens into urethra as ejaculatory duct. It extends through the penis to its external opening called as urethral meatus. Now, what is the function of these male sex accessory ducts? These not only just store the sperm, these also transport the sperms. In this picture, you can see sex accessory duct. These are testicular lobules. Arrow is showing testicular lobules which are distinguished by septae. There is tunica albuginea which is outermost covering. It starts with reed testes, epididymis, and in the end, there is vas deferens, which is shown as ductus deferens. Now, the male external genitalia, which is called as penis. It is made up of special tissue that helps in erection of penis to facilitate insemination. The large end of the penis, which is shown by arrow, is called as glans penis, is covered by a loose fold of tissue that is called as foreskin also called as prepuce. The tip of the penis is highly sensitive. During sexual excitement, the spongy tissue gets filled with blood and making it erect and stiff. Urethra runs through it and acts as a common passage of semen and urine. This is urethra, which acts as a common passage of semen and urine. Now we talk about male sex accessory gland. It includes paired seminal vesicles, a prostrate and a paired bulbourethral gland. And bulbourethral gland are also called as Cowper's gland. First of all, we will talk about seminal vesicles. Secretions of seminal vesicles constitute seminal plasma, which is rich in fructose, calcium and certain enzymes. And by surprise, it constitutes 40 to 80 percent of the semen. Next is bulbourethral gland. Secretion of this gland help in lubrication of penis. Now, prostate gland. It secretes a special fluid that is called as prostate fluid which nourishes and protects the sperm. And it constitutes 5 to 30 percent of the semen. In picture, you can see there is seminal vesicle, prostate gland and paired cowper gland which are also called as bulbourethral gland. Now, the human male gamete sperm. Basically, it is a microscopic structure composed of head. This arrow is showing head, neck, middle piece and a tail. A plasma membrane envelops the whole of the body of sperm. First of all, the head. It contains an elongated haploid nucleus, the anterior portion of which is covered by a cap-like structure which is called as acrosome. And this acrosome helps in entering of sperm into ovum. The acrosome is filled with enzyme that helps in fertilization of ovum. Middle piece, it possesses numerous mitochondria which produce energy for the movement. And the tail, which facilitates sperm mortality, essential for fertilization. Human male ejaculates about 200 to 300 million sperms during the coitus. Sperms move with a speed of 2 mm per minute in the female body and for a normal fertilization to take place at least 60% must have normal shape and size and 40% of them must show vigorous motility. And what constitutes the semen? The semen is not only the sperms, it is seminal plasma along with the sperms. Now what is spermatogenesis? Spermatogenesis. The process of formation of male gametes in males, that is sperms, is called as spermatogenesis. It begins at puberty. This spermatogonia present on the inside wall of the seminiferous tubules multiply by mitotic division and increase in number. 
each spermatogonion is diploid and contains 46 chromosomes. Some of the spermatogonia are called as primary spermatocytes which periodically undergo meiosis and meiosis is reductional division. A primary spermatocyte completes the first meiotic division leading to formation of two equal haploid cells which are called as secondary spermatocytes which have 23 chromosomes each that is they are haploid. These secondary spermatocytes undergo the second meiotic division to produce four equal spermatids and now spermiogenesis. The spermatids are transferred into sperms by a process called spermiogenesis. Permeation Sperms are finally released from the seminiferous tubule by the process called spermiation. In this picture, you can see the process of spermatogenesis. It starts with the spermatogonium which is diploid and by the mitotic division it converts into primary spermatocyte. Then the meiosis 1 which is the reductional division takes place and it divides into 4 haploid spermatid. And then by the process of spermiogenesis, spermatid are transferred into sperms. Now, what is the hormonal control of spermatogenesis? It starts with GnRH. GnRH is gonadotropin releasing hormone which is hypothalamic hormone. It is secreted by hypothalamus. It acts on the pituitary gland which stimulates secretion of two gonadotropins. They are LH and FSH. LH. LH is luteinizing hormone which acts at the leading cell and stimulate secretion of androgen and androgen in turn stimulates spermatogenesis. FSH FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. It acts on Sertoli cells and stimulates secretion of some factor which help in spermiogenesis. After male reproductive system, now we will talk about female reproductive system. And the human female reproductive system includes a pair of ovaries and ovaries are primary female sex organ. A pair of oviduct which is also called as fallopian tube. A single uterus, cervix and vagina, female external genitalia and a pair of mammary glands. First of all, we will talk about ovaries. Ovaries are female primary sex organ which produces the female gamete called as ovum and several steroid hormone which are called as ovarian hormone. Ovaries are two in number and the location of ovaries is pelvis region located one on each side of the lower abdomen. What is the size of ovary? It has a length of 2 to 4 cm. They are connected to the pelvis wall and uterus by some special ligament which holds the ovary. Each ovary is covered by a thin epithelium which encloses the ovarian stroma and covering each ovary is covered by a thin epithelium and stroma is divided into two zones, a peripheral cortex and an inner medulla. Now we will talk about female sex accessory duct. The oviduct uterus and vagina constitute the female sex accessory duct. First of all, we will talk about fallopian tube. Fallopian tube is also called as oviduct as it takes the ovum. Each fallopian tube is about 10 to 12 cm in length and extends to the periphery of each ovary to the uterus. Now, what are the parts of fallopian tube? Basically, fallopian tube has three parts. As my arrow is showing, the first part of the fallopian tube is infundibulum. The second part is called as ampulla. And the third part arrow is showing is isthmus. Now, infundibulum. It is a part closer to the ovary and is funnel shaped. It possesses finger-like projection called as fimbriae which helps in collection of ovum after ovulation. Ampulla, infundibulum lead to a wider part of the oviduct which is called as ampulla which is the second part of the fallopian tube. Isthmus, it is the last part of the oviduct and has a narrow lumen and joins the uterus. The important thing is to note down that this ampullary isthmic junction is the site of fertilization in female. Now the structure of uterus. 
uterus basically it is single it is also called as worm and the shape of uterus is like an inverted pear it is supported by ligaments attached to the pelvic wall and the wall of uterus has three layer of tissue the outermost layer is called as perimetrium it is the external thin membranous layer and performs the function of protection myometrium the middle thick layer of smooth muscle and it performs the function that it exhibits strong contraction during the delivery of baby which is called as parturition the last layer but not the least endometrium it is the innermost glandular layer and performs the very important function of cyclical changes during the menstrual cycle the uterus opens into vagina through a narrow cervix and what is birth canal the cavity of the cervix along with vagina forms the birth canal through which the child comes out that is why it is called as birth canal now we talk about female external genitalia it includes mons pubis labia majora labia minora hymen and clitoris first of all what is mons pubis it is a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and pubic hair labia majora these are fleshy folds of tissue which extend down from the mons pubis and surround the vaginal opening labia minora these are the paired folds of tissue under the these are the paired fold of tissue under the labia majora hymen the opening of the vagina is often covered partially by a membrane which is called as hymen clitoris it is a tiny finger like structure which lies at the junction of two labia minora above urethral opening this was all about female external genitalia now we will talk about mammary glands a functional mammary gland is characteristic of all females these are paired structure that contain glandular tissue and a variable amount of fat the glandular tissue of each breast is divided into 15 to 20 mammary lobe which contains cluster of cells called as alveoli and these alveoli are different from the alveoli found in lungs the the cells of alveoli secrete milk which is stored in the lumen of alveoli the alveoli open into mammary tubules the tubules of each lobe join to form a mammary duct several mammary ducts join to form a wider mammary ampulla which is connected to the lactiferous duct through which milk is sucked out this is a picture of a mammary gland and as you can see my arrow is pointing towards the lactiferous duct and this is the duct through which milk is sucked out and the this arrow is showing fat and cluster of alveolar cell and these alveoli cell are the milk producing cells now oogenesis the process of formation of ovum or egg in female is called as oogenesis it is initiated during the embryonic development stage when a couple of million oogonia which are also called as ovum mother cell are formed within each fetal ovary this cell start division and enter prophase 1 of the meiotic division and gets temporarily arrested and are called as primary oocyte each primary oocyte gets surrounded by a layer of granulosa cell which are called as primary follicle a large number of follicles degenerate during the phase from birth to puberty the primary follicles get surrounded by more layer of granulosa cell and are called as secondary follicle the secondary follicle transform into tertiary follicle which are characterized by a fluid filled cavity called as antrum the tertiary follicle further changes into mature follicle and are called as graafian follicle the graafian follicle as my arrow is showing showing you the graafian follicle this graafian follicle ruptures to release the ovum from the ovary and which is called as ovulation as the, this picture is depicting the release of ovum from the ovary and this process is called as ovulation thank you